traditional Sumo user conference tutorial. Um, now, uh, today, I will be showing you a range of topics uh, from starting with the beginner uh, level topics, introductory material, and then uh, uh, moving on to uh, somewhat more sophisticated topics. Uh, but uh, as in every year, uh, we will start very uh, with uh, the wizard and three click scenario generation. And we'll also talk about network editing. We'll uh, uh, see how to simply create individual traffic flows. And then we'll, we'll talk a bit about the advanced things such as opposite direction driving, uh, pedestrian crossings, and traffic and search for parking. Um, to uh, run this tutorial, to follow this tutorial on your own computers, maybe uh, uh, after the talk, because it will probably be hard to follow it live, um, you will need Sumo version 1.13.0, um, the Python interpreter on your computer, a text editor, and the tutorial files, which you can find in our documentation in the tutorial section. There is a subsection uh, Sumo user conference tutorials where you'll find the download link. Um, this tutorial will be recorded and um, I'm hoping that you are able to see uh, the, the keys that I press in the lower part of the screen. So if I press some buttons, I hope you can see those and they will be in the recordings. Um, did anybody see any keys? Michael, yes, Robert? we can see them. Correct. Then uh, let's start with the OSM web wizard. Um, well, this is a tool that comes with Sumo and it's meant to help you set up a simulation scenario with just a few clicks. Um, when you run this tool, um, and you can, can probably run it um, from your uh, taskbar if uh, Sumo is installed, uh, uh, there should be a link to the OSM web wizard, um, or you can find it in the tools subfolder of your Sumo installation. So if you run this, uh, it will open up a web browser where you can select uh, uh, a part of the map, a part of the world that you want to download. Um, and then you can also select the types of traffic that you want to have in your simulation. Um, and there are additional options such as enabling public transport, and downloading satellite backgrounds or, uh, or shapes for land use and buildings. And uh, as a new feature uh, in the latest release, uh, or rather uh, since the last uh, user conference tutorial, I'm happy to uh, present to you a new feature that is road type selection. So um, there's a new uh, um, tab in the in the wizard, I'll show this in a few seconds, where you can select all the kinds of roads that you would like to see in your simulation. And one uh, major use case of that is being able to download bigger scenarios because the, the download size of the scenario is limited by the, by the OpenStreetMap servers. And if you select your road types and you deselect uh, background shapes, then you can uh, build very big scenarios. For, for example, if you only need the major roads. So let's see how this works. Uh, so there should be a Sumo folder somewhere in your system wherever you install that. And if you don't have a link in your taskbar, then you just uh, enter the tools folder and you launch the OSM web wizard. And then what you'll see is this uh, uh, a browser window where you can select an area and you drag it around and resize this and you can um, inside this and you can select the types of traffic that you want and the types of roads that you need so disable everything you do not want and maybe Let's not add polygons this time, just to show how that goes, and then generate your scenario, and that's it. 
So of course it takes a while to download the data and to build the scenario. Um, but eventually what you'll get is a simulation window with that scenario up and running. So of course I inc already included scenario files for you in this tutorial. So I'll just close the wizard real quickly and uh, we'll move on to the files that I brought you. All right. So this is the first folder of the tutorial files. And let's talk a little bit about the files that you will find in there. So um, the most important file is the um, sumo config file. It's the configuration that tells uh, that ties everything together. Um, and uh, the key files here are the, the network file named uh, with the extension .net.xml. This is the, the road infrastructure. And then you have uh, uh, files, one or more files that define the traffic in the scenario. So in this case, it's, the, it's named OSM passenger trips XML. And depending on the buttons you clicked, there could be others, but right now we only enabled passenger cars, but there could be more files for public transport stops, uh, pedestrians. And if you're interested in these, then I invite you to look at tutorials from past years because these were explained. There's one file that defines how the, how the simulation shall look when first opened. And then there's a range of files for rebuilding the scenario with different options. And uh, some of this, for example, the, the build batch file will uh, will see and use in this tutorial. Because whenever you change something about the network, you generally have to rebuild the traffic to, to adapt to changing infrastructure. All right. Um, so let's now look at the simulation that I brought for you as part of the tutorial. So um, if Sumo is installed uh, on your system correctly, then you can just click on a file with the Sumo config extension and it should launch Sumo. And uh, so let's uh, run the simulation. By the way, we have uh, added new hotkeys. So you can now just uh, run the simulation by uh, hitting the space bar, uh, the space key, and you can stop it this way again. And now if you look very carefully, you will probably not see anything because the cars are just too small at this type of zoom. As promised, we, we, we downloaded the big scenario, which is possible with filtering road types. So if you want to see cars moving all over the place, uh, one way to do this is to change the, the graphical settings. This is uh, found uh, behind this rainbow button and one setting that I always find to be useful is uh, found in the vehicle tab. It's draw with constant size. Suddenly all the cars are large and uh, let's uh, color them by speed so we can get some idea of what they're doing. And now in order not to have to set this again every time, we simply store these settings in the registry. I call that uh, speed large because I color the cars by speed and they are large. So now I have this here and I can use it again and again. So let's run this simulation and see how it goes. Um, you also have hotkeys for, um, for changing the delay or you can do this with the slider and make the simulation run really slow or really fast. Uh, so somewhere in between is probably good. Page up, page down also changes this. So we can see cars running all over the network. And then suddenly here in the upper left corner, it looks kind of bad. And we see warning messages pop up. Now, there are some things you can do with these warning messages. One thing uh, is you can click on uh, the underlined uh, vehicle names, or you can click on the underlined lane IDs, and you can even click on those uh, underlined times. This will set a breakpoint, so you could then rewind the simulation and run it up to that time to see what's really been happening. 
So what we have here is some kind of deadlock. The cars are in this circular structure and the circle has run full. And so none of the cars can really move. Uh, after a while, cars are being teleported, which means they are moved to the next edge in an irregular manner. So this is often a sign of uh, things going wrong. And of course, uh, this is something we, we want to change and can change and I'll show you real quickly. So uh, back to the slides. Mm. Now, uh, for those that are new to Sumo, you may be wondering what you're actually seeing there. What's in the simulation? What, what, how did that come about? So the network on which these cars are simulated is based on the OSM OpenStreetMap uh, uh, road network uh, data storage. And uh, in this case, it's a filtered version of the data set because we only included the major roads. And um, it's also a heuristic interpretation because the data isn't really built for micro simulation. It's maybe built for routing, mostly for, for building pretty maps. So we do have to uh, do some interpretation. If you look at the satellite picture of that particular intersection, you see it is one big intersection and open street map. It's kind of like the square made of four a cluster of four intersections. And here, the interpretation turned this into three uh, junctions, which still form a circle, unfortunately. So uh, this is something we can fix. And we'll fix this with the graphical editor, uh, net edit. So one way to launch this uh, is from your taskbar, or if you have an icon, or it's simply from Sumo GUI by pressing Control T. This is in the edit menu, if you. Uh, need to recall the hotkey. So uh, we open that up and it uh, sets up, up in this uh, area of the map. And now what we want to do is we want to turn this cluster of intersections into a single intersection, which is easy to simulate. So we'll switch to a selection mode with the letter S. Now we can click on each of these junctions to select them. And then there's this, uh, uh, tool join selected junctions with the F7 key. And now it's a single junction. And if you want to see how this looks, we can recompute all the shapes with the F5 key. So that's that. And now control S, we save the network. You can find this in the file menu, obviously. And now can we restart the simulation? Well, yes, we can. I pressed control R to, to reload it but it won't work because now the roads have changed and we have to rebuild the traffic. So um, I close the simulation and I go to that folder and I run the, the build batch file. And now I can run the simulation again. And uh, ah, yes, now I can switch back to the settings that I stored. Uh, and as you can see, there is no error now and the traffic is running. And if we let it run for a little longer, we'll find that it does no longer have this deadlock here in the circle. Now, one thing that was important here was to close the simulation because on Windows, the files are still locked by a running simulation and you cannot regenerate the traffic. So just keep that in mind when working with this tutorial. All right. so. Um, now, another small background information, um, the process that created the network out of the OSM data, it actually wanted to join this junction the way we just did manually, and it failed. So it actually give a gave a warning in, a, in its log output and said, no, I, I couldn't manage to join this junction, though I would have liked to. So this is something to look at when building networks, looking for those warnings. All right. So what we can do is we can compare how the simulation behaves with and without the fix. And as you may imagine, such a deadlock has quite an impact on the, on the running times of the cars and how long they wait and how much time they lose. And so I've put this down in a little table and uh, you can see that the waiting time, uh, the average waiting time of all the cars in the network was cut in half due to this uh, fix. Now, if you want to get this kind of statistics, one way is to just run the simulation on the command line. 
So I'll open up command line here and I run sumo minus C osm.sumo config. And uh, when this has finished running, you can get all the statistics are just showed in the table on the command line. Of course, there are files, uh, XML files where you can write this to, but this is often a quick and convenient way. All right, moving on to network editing. And by the way, we're actually in a different tutorial folder now. now. I'll switch to this one. So um, this is the second part, net edit. I'll open up the editor again, closing the old one. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to reduce the network to focus on a smaller part of the simulation. Uh, sometimes this is useful. For example, if you don't want actually rectangular areas, which the web wizard will give you. So again, we go to select mode, pressing the letter S, and then by holding down shift, we can do a rectangle selection and build up the part of the network that we want to keep. So if you, uh, you can keep adding action areas, and of course you could also switch this to remove areas. So let's, let's add some more. And now you'll find this reduce button and bam, it reduces your network to the selected extent. And then of course you save it and you can rebuild the traffic. What else can we do? Um, well, when uh, looking back at that satellite picture, we, we noticed that the intersection uh, which we had joined uh, actually had all the markings of a traffic light. So uh, was that the case in Sumo? Oh, actually, no, this is, I undid the join by going to another folder. So this intersection does not have a traffic light. Uh, you can see its type is priority, which means no traffic light. It's a, uh, there, the right of way is governed by priority rules. So let's change this. We go to the traffic light mode by pressing the letter T. This is this little icon here on top. And if you don't recall the hotkeys, you can find them all in this edit menu. And now we click on the junction, and we can create the traffic light. And that's it, we save the network and we have a simulation with a traffic light here. And what happens if we do? Oh, actually one little part of background. OpenStreetMap does have some information about traffic lights, but often they just record where the signs are. And it's a bit of a challenge to figure out uh, what the controlled intersection is, all the more if there isn't a single intersection in OpenStreetMap. So in this case, the heuristic failed, often it succeeds, but here we had to adapt this manually, which is a teaching moment, I guess. So uh, what happens when we add the traffic light to the simulation? Well, uh, the waiting time of cars goes up because presumably there's not so much traffic and now some cars have to wait at the red light. Mm, so what else can we do? We can change the type of the traffic light because what we had before was a traffic light uh, that had a fixed cycle plan. So all the phases have the same duration again and again, regardless of the traffic at that intersection. And we can change this by going to the inspection mode, this, is this icon here, clicking the intersection and then changing the TL type, the traffic light type attribute from static to actuated. And we save the network and that's all there is to it. Uh, what this actually does in the background is it sets minimum and maximum durations uh, based on some options for each of the green phases. And then uh, in the simulation, there will be some traffic detection that cycles the phases. But we'll hear a lot more about traffic lights in this conference based on what I know about the schedule. So let's look at the simulation uh, corresponding to all the changes we did. It's in this final folder. And uh, uh, when we run the simulation, we see that there is this traffic light here. Um, cars are coming and uh, they wait at the red lights, obviously. And one thing we can look at 
is the duration of the phases. So let's click on, right click on one of those colored lines, show parameter. We have all kinds of, of values here. And one thing that I want to look at is the running duration. So how long does a certain phase actually run? And when I click on this little plot button, uh, a plot window opens up. Um, and let's test these side by side. So the window isn't being hidden. And let's run the simulation. And as you can see, the phases are often quite short, but sometimes they're getting longer due to the presence of traffic that well that needs a needs a longer phase. So this way we can see that we're actually running an actuated traffic light. And when we look at uh, what this uh, does, um, so we've reduced the network, then we added a traffic light, which gave uh, 15 seconds of waiting time compared to we only had a, a priority junction. And now we've turned this into an actuated traffic light and the average waiting time in the whole scenario goes down, even though there are many intersections. So this goes to show there's quite an impact uh, from the type of traffic light we define at one intersection. And then you may ask, well, is this the real traffic light plan that's running at that intersection? And I have to tell you, no, it's just a, a best guess. And it's most likely not what happens there, all the more because in the real world, this intersection has a tram going through, which certainly affects the way the phases switch. But it's uh, better than no traffic light, and it's also better than having a static tra traffic light. And often we're trying to approximate the real world as best as we can, particular, in particular in large networks. So something else you could do in NetEdit is you could actually look at that intersection, shape it. So how would that work? You could uh, right-click on that intersection and set a custom junction shape, and then you can move the change around or delete points by shift clicking or adding more points by just dragging. When you're done, press enter and to the traffic, uh, the, the intersection. Uh, this is seldomly necessary. And in this case, it also has no big impact on traffic, no, no measurable impact on the average properties over the whole network. All right, so much for the first batch of network editing. Now let's move to a new topic. Let's talk about traffic. Um, unfortunately, the traffic you've seen so far in this scenario is simply random because there is no good general data source to, to read traffic data from so we could build scenarios anywhere in the world. So uh, what happened here in the background with the wizard is it generated a certain configuration to build random traffic for this network. And the key things I've highlighted here is uh, for how long should this traffic last? So it ends at 3,600 uh, seconds, one hour of traffic. And then there's the P parameter, the, the period between insertions. So this was somehow based on the size of the network. For a larger network, you want more calls typically. So in this network, every 2.1 second, a new car was inserted on a random edge, um, on a random road, so to speak, uh, and driving to some other random road. And the traffic has some attributes, so it's passenger cars, and they depart on whatever lane suits their route best. So these are all attributes that were given automatically, and the trips should have a minimum distance of 300 meters, uh, because otherwise it looks ridiculous. You should have just walked much better for the environment anyway. And then there are a, a certain number of options um, that you can use to influence the probability of a certain road network edge to, to be the origin or destination for traffic. So this option scales the probability with the number of lanes, more lanes means more traffic. And this scales the probability of the fringe factor option with uh, uh, in a way that makes traffic more likely to appear at the outside of the network, at, at, the, at the outer border, also disappear there. This is, by the way, an option that you can set in the, in the web wizard interface when 
assigning the traffic. And then there's one more option, validate, that I want to highlight. This ensures that all the tr random trips that were generated can actually be done. So there is a road from start to end. This may not always be the case. For example, if you download a part of a city with a river and no bridge, then you cannot go from the left to the right side in that scenario. And then some trips should rather not be created because they are not valid for the scenario. All right, so much for random traffic. Often it's a good start, but uh, uh, it's not the end point of uh, building a good scenario. Um, and one thing you can do, especially for smaller scenarios, is just defining the flow, the traffic flow in a very manual way. Let's say so many cars driving from this point to that point. So let's see how we can do this in NetEdit. Um, we'll move, we're moving to another folder. So let me clean this up. It's a bit of a challenge, so many windows. All right. So this is the now the third part of the tutorial. This is about traffic flow. Um, and again, I used the easy way to open up the network editor by first running the simulation, then pressing Control T to run the editor. So far, we've spent some time in the network mode, but there are three major modes: one for editing network things with all these sub modes of inspecting, deleting, creating edges, traffic lights, etc. Uh, and you will you can learn more about these in other tutorials that are have been recorded. And then there is a major mode for editing traffic. This is the demand mode, and also a data mode that was explained in last year's tutorial, but we'll not use that today. So in the demand mode, uh, we can use the sub mode for vehicles uh, to create some traffic. Uh, and you can create individual cars either with fixed routes, these are called vehicles here, or you can define trips where you only give a start and an endpoint, and the simulation has to figure out what roads are actually taken, and we call these trips here. But uh, let's now create a flow. So a flow is not just one car that shows up in the simulation, but a whole bunch of them, and there are various ways to define them. Uh, from one edge to another, or from one junction to another, or with a fixed route. Um, and uh, right now, let's uh, define a flow between two junctions. Let's say uh, from this junction to, um, let's say, this junction here. OK. And uh, it's not done yet. Uh, I've just defined locations. Um, let's set some more properties of this flow. So uh, since that edge where it starts has two lanes, uh, we want to have the traffic start on either one. So we set the depart lane to a value of random. And then we also want to have the car start with some speed because this is really the edge of the scenario and they're not starting from home, but they're really coming in from some other part of the world. So let's set their depart speed to uh, a smarter value. Let's uh, set this to the average. So whatever the other cars are driving, this is the speed that they should come in with. And if there's no traffic, they can just use the, the maximum speed. So random depart lane, average speed, and now let's define how many cars we want. So there are various ways to describe this. We could set a number or an end in time. Let's go with the end in time. And then to show you a new feature, let's have a traffic that follows a Poisson distribution rather that conforms to a Poisson process. And we'll set some kind of uh, arrival rate. Let's use uh, 1.5 cars per second. Um, and you may be wondering, isn't that a bit much? But yes, it is. you'll see in a little while. 
Uh, and now finally I press enter and this uh, car symbol here appears. It shows you that it's a flow. We could also use the inspect mode to review all the properties. But for now, let's save this um, to a file. And uh, let's uh, use this in the simulation. So how would you make sure that this flow gets called? Well, there is of course our sumo configuration. And uh, here we have to uh, make sure that the files included. So where it says route files, this is all, these are all the traffic definitions. We have our random passenger trips and now we have our flow, which are just named like this. The name is arbitrary. Um, and then it gets included. So let's run the simulation. Oh, yes, yes. Now this happens when I change things during live uh, testing. Actually, I defined a traffic flow between edges, not between junctions. If you define traffic between junctions, you have to actually have to set another simulation option. Uh, this one, teaching moment again. Um, so let's, uh, let's look at that simulation. So we have the traffic coming in and uh, let's make this a little bigger and actually let's not color the cars by streets, but by their uh, default coloring. Um, no, not those. Uh, no, that did help very much because I forgot to give them a distinct color. I wanted to have them in blue. So let's uh, change that real quick. Uh, let's give them the color blue. And I save the demand with control shift D. And now that didn't work out. Why didn't it? Those are blue. Am I in the right folder? Those are blue, that's fine as well. And now vehicles by their given color, all right. Yes, there they are. Now we can see our flow as opposed to all the random traffic we had beforehand. And uh, now you may be wondering, do we really have uh, a Poisson distribution here? Well, um, I'm afraid we don't. Uh, because what happens is that we've actually defined more traffic than the network can handle. And this is shown uh, by this little icon here turning yellow. Uh, and by a certain number here going up. This is the number of insertion backlog vehicles. And I'll just uh, open a little plot for you to see. I'll rerun the simulation and I'll show you the number of insertion backlog vehicles. So what is this about? This number keeps going up and up and up and up. And uh, yes, it doesn't stop. So this, what this basically says is uh, we've defined too much traffic. Uh, cars that cannot enter the road network due to lack of space, they are delayed in their insertion uh, with the goal of inserting them later, but the traffic never lets up. So this, uh, this queue gets never emptier. We have to define fewer traffic. So uh, let's do this right now. Let's. Uh, uh, let's change this traffic. And now I'll, uh, I could do this in NetEdit, but I do it uh, in the files here really quick. Uh, and I change this rate parameter here from um, 
0 1.5 to 0 0.7. So let's have uh, let's have fewer traffic. Um, and let's look at the simulation and the insertion backlog. And now you can see this looks much tamer. Often this uh, falls back to zero, um, but we're still not quite happy. Uh, so uh, there are a number of things we could do. We could uh, decrease the traffic further, particularly uh, under the realization that there is a big bottleneck here. Um, and there is something else we can do. Let's go back to the slides for a little bit. Um, we could set one of the rather novel options for Sumo. This is the option extrapolate depart pos. Um, so what does this do? Um, whenever you insert traffic in Sumo, uh, uh, this happens during a simulation step, rather at the end of the simulation step. So if you uh, step one second, uh, if you have one second per step, then, step, then every second a car can enter. Um, but uh, this uh, kind of constrains the spacing between the cars. Of course, we could lower the, the, the time or increase the time resolution of the simulation, but we could also do is set this new option, uh, which uh, ensures that cars that actually wanted to be part between two full seconds, that they are moved along a little bit. And so we have much better spacing in the simulation. Um, so let's... Uh, show you how this looks. Um, so I've prepared a second configuration file and this just sets this option, extrapolate depart pos. And when we run this, well, uh, what, what you see in those plots is that uh, it stays at zero, the insertion backlog starts at zero, stays at zero for larger periods of time. But as you can see, it still goes up from time to time and this is where we don't really have the personal space you want. So it's still a bit too much traffic. All right, mm, so much for the traffic flow. Now onto the next topic of opposite direction driving. Mm, this is a new folder. So let's uh, uh, talk about the two things that we need for opposite direction driving. We need to change the network with some additional information that's as well. This is run road and that other road that's really the opposite side. You can move between those uh, for overtaking. So this is the first thing we, we have to do. And uh, I'll show you how this looks in the network editor. So first of all, let's look at an edge that has a potential opposite direction. So, um, so here we have one direction of the road and here we have another direction of the road. And as long as we uh, look at those edges, we won't find what we're looking for. We have to really uh, inspect the lanes of the edge either by holding down shift as you can see, there's a little, the, the icon at the cursor even changes. So now when we click here, we see the attributes of lanes, but we could also click this button and then every click would inspect lanes. Um, so let's look at the lane. This has a little opposite attribute, which is empty at the moment. So how are we gonna fill this? Uh, we're gonna use an option that populates uh, all those fields automatically whenever there's an opposite direction lane. So we'll go to the options screen and then all the options that are available in that convert can be found here. In the bottom of the processing tab, we'll have opposite guess. And if we set this option and rebuild the network, I'll press F5. Now when we look at that lane, it has the opposite information filled in. All right, so that's the one thing we want to do. And uh, now the second thing we need to do is we need to give the car some reason to overtake. Of course, they could do this 
if a very fast car finds itself behind a very slow car. But in these types of urban network, the more common reason is to have uh, cars parked on the road that really force you to overtake through the opposite direction. So um, let's create some traffic parked on the road. Um, we go to demand mode, this is F3, again, this button here, and to the vehicle mode, and let's create some trips. And we want the cars to be just parked in this area, two in one direction, one in the other direction. And so um, let's make it so that they depart at their stop location. So I set the part push to stop. And then I click once here, followed by enter again here, followed by enter again here. Now I have to find three trips. Actually, they are not shown in that position yet. Uh, we didn't define any stops yet. Um, so let's do that uh, as a next step. Uh, we go to the stop mode with the letter A. And now we have to define for which car we want to select the stop. In this case, it's simple. We don't have very many, so we can just select them on the drop down. And now let's have them stop somewhere here uh, along the route uh, for 3,600 seconds. So make them a real annoyance for traffic. And I press enter, it's there. Now for the other car, for the second car going this way, let's also create a stop. Actually, I don't even need to press enter, the click is enough. And uh, one more here. And let's inspect those stops to make sure that all of them have the correct attributes. Yes, 3,000, well, 660. Doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, this one as well. And this one, I still need to say change 3,600. All right. So, and I find that these are too closely spaced. So let's move them around a bit with move mode. And I just uh, drag those stops to give the overtaken cars a bit more room. And then of course I have to save this uh, as demand. And now let's uh, just uh, uh, look at, I'm not saving this, I'm using files I saved beforehand. Let's just go to the, uh, the new uh, tutorial files and see how this looks in the simulation. All right, so first of all, let's do a single simulation step to, to see those cars appear. And I could click this button. I could also press the D key on my keyboard to do a single step. And as you can see, here are the cars, uh, two going to the northern direction, one going to the southern direction. I can click on them, show their route, and then I'll find they have a stop for 3,600 seconds. Now let's see the traffic coming in. Um, and let's make this. Vehicles large again, and there we go. All right, so you can see the cars have to kind of weave through here. And if there's traffic coming from the opposite side, they have to wait. But I guess that's not exciting enough because that's uh, still just the random traffic and we really want to see what's happening with lots of traffic. So let's use the other config with the flow that we defined beforehand. Again, make the cars large and let's go. So now here we have those, this big wave of cars moving up and uh, they may think it's a good idea to drive here. Uh, but as you can see, the queue is building up whenever there's traffic coming from the other side. So they have to wait. Now, even this traffic has to wait here because otherwise there would be a total blockage. Uh, uh, and uh, then at some point, the blue cars decide they're better off <laughs> going the other route, which is a good decision that those trips take automatically or those flows 
with an unconstrained route take automatically the sumo. All right, so that's for opposite direction drive. Then moving on to the next topic uh, of pedestrian crossings. Now in the wizard, we could have just activated uh, the traffic type of pedestrians and we would have received a network that is ready made for pedestrian simulation. Uh, but sometimes it's good to know how to build things from scratch. So this is what I'll show you now. So in, uh, in the network, still have this open. No. Let's open my network. Um, another way to open the network, of course. Um, let's look at our favorite intersection here and all the steps we need to take to turn this into a pedestrian ready intersection. All right, so what we want to add are sidewalks because our pedestrians have to walk somewhere. I'll enter the selection mode and I'll just draw a big rectangle here. And now I have several things selected, junctions and edges. Uh, but when I right click on one of those selected edges, I can perform operations on all of them. So I'm gonna add a restricted lane of type sidewalk. Eight sidewalks are added. Now I cancel my selection with escape and I recompute the geometry with a five. Um, and so now the pedestrians have some place to walk only in the vicinity of this crossing. And this has one important side effect. Not only does it create lanes that are exclusive to pedestrians when I click here, no, inspect mode when I click here, I find that only pedestrians are allowed here. So this is the only green check mark. And if I click here, I'll find that the pedestrians are disallowed. So they're the disallowed box. Uh, in contrast to those other road network edges that uh, only disallow uh, rail traffic and ships, but they still permit pedestrians. This kind of uh, road network is a shared space simulation, but here we want we don't want shared space. We want a real crossing where the pedestrians have to wait and then cross. All right, so we have the sidewalks. Let's do the crossings themselves. This is the crossing mode uh, activated by R. We click on the junction, and now we could add one big crossing across those edges by selecting them and pressing enter. But let's not do this, we want little islands. So let's click on each edge and turn and press enter to create the crossing. And that's it, crossings all around. And uh, if we open this in Sumo GUI, this is how it looks. All right, the next step is uh, to add pedestrian traffic. So again, we go to demand mode and then to the person mode. Uh, you're already familiar with the concept of a flow. So now let's have this flow for persons and just have them walk from here to there and from here to there. And we can save this um, as demand. And now let's look at this in the simulation. Um, this is uh, crossing. All right, what do we have? We have our sidewalks. Let's make the simulation a bit slower. And what I did here was I changed the visualization to have the pedestrians show up as little circles because in this way they, are, they have good visibility. Um, and if you look really closely, I loaded a file that I defined beforehand because suddenly there's traffic uh, crossing twice going from here over there to there, which is a bit more interesting. And of course you can do this also by just selecting other targets. There are many potential routes to take by the pedestrians and uh, they are not constrained to any particular direction. They can use all side works in all direction. So this is the pedestrian simulation. Now to the last part of the tutorial, before we are running out of time, 
let's talk about something more advanced. Let's talk about traffic in search of parking. Right now, uh, our traffic has entered the simulation and then they've, well, basically disappeared on the final edge, either at the border of the network or somewhere within the network. And this time we want something different. We want them all to find a parking spot at the end of their route, at the end of their trip. So for this, we need uh, to have three things. We need to define infrastructure, parking areas. And of course we could define those manually in NetEdit, uh, but today I'll show you a pipeline to do all this uh, fully, automatic, fully automatic. So we'll need parking areas in our network. The next thing we'll need is uh, a change of plans. The cars, they have to stop at the end of their route. And again, we could add those in NetEdit, but here I'll show you how to do this automatically. And we'll need a final thing for our parking search. We'll need information about, well, about um, the presence of alternative parking areas in the area. So think of those as the little parking guidance signs. Sometimes it's just um, a sign that says parking this way. And sometimes it's a real information sign uh, that has a digital display for showing the current occupancy of the parking areas at the destination. And you can define either one. And this uh, today will go for, for just the signs that tell there is parking to be had this way. So uh, the cars have to guess the occupancy. So all this is, uh, is happening with uh, three scripts that are put in a batch file and I'll go over the, the options for these, or the meaning of these scripts very quickly. The first one generates parking areas for a whole network. So basically here it adds a parking capacity, parking area to pretty much every edge. You can also add some randomization there. We find to the output files, so those, this will hold the parking areas, parking area at XML. Um, it defines that each area has a random capacity, and even if that should drop to zero, let's keep it anyway. Uh, so the parking areas will have capacity anywhere from well, one to a larger number. And let's not have any parking areas on motorways or, or motorway ramps, that would be silly. Okay, so the next script, it adds stops um, at the end of every trip. Again, it loads uh, a network and it loads a, a demand file. These are all random passenger trips. And it also loads the parking areas and says, well, just not park anywhere, but park at a parking area for a duration of one hour. And finally, this is a script that generates the connectivity or visibility. It also needs the network, the parking areas, uh, an output file. And in this case, it says, well, let's, uh, have the visibility at least for the other side of the road. So if you're going one way, you can see whether the parking areas on the other side of the road are occupied or not. Um, and let's look for alternatives in an area of four kilometers. This is a bit extreme, but uh, you'll see why we'll need this in a second. So all this uh, is tied together in this batch file in the last part of the tutorial, uh, parking but, so let's uh, run this real quick. And it runs uh, through all these uh, stages. And then we can look at our simulation. So what do we see here? We see uh, funny colors. Uh, I've colored the roads, streets or edges by the number of free parking spaces. So let's have a legend here. Uh, so somewhere between um, no, up to maybe 20 or 40 parking spaces on some of the edges, no, but even more here. So let's run the simulation. And we have our cars. This time I show them as circles. Um, and uh, they're driving through the network. And what are they gonna do? Well, let's look at one of those cars. And not one on the motorway, but one uh, on the road, let's show the route. So this car wants to 
stop there for 3,600 seconds. Well, then let's follow this car. I'll do a shift click on the car or its route and I'm in tracking mode. And so let's uh, track where it's going. Well, it did find a parking spot and that's it. So to stop tracking the car, I can do a right click here and select stop tracking, uh, or I can just double click and now I'm free again. But let's not show this route anymore. And uh, let's run the simulation for a little while longer to have the parking areas fill up. And as you can see, the colors change. Uh, they change to gray when there's no parking capacity left on an edge. So let's now follow some other car on its desperate search for parking. Um, track it. All right, so let's see how it goes. And as you can see, there, there were some jumps here. So it uh, arrived at a point where there was no parking and then it picked an alternative uh, and then it finally found one. Uh, so the, the parking part of Sumo provides for a large number of options to configure the way these cars actually pick their alternatives. Um, and then in the end, when we run this long enough, uh, actually all the cars have find a parking spot. And if we wonder how long they took for this, well, we can just recolor them by the number of times that they changed their route. And as we can see, some cars took quite a number of attempts to do so. Um, and some of them are actually still going, still looking. But in the end, everyone found their spot. All right, that's all I wanted to show you for today. Uh, we will be uh, going in a break um, and then uh, uh, be ready with the Ask Us Anything session. So uh, to sum this up, um, I use the OSM Web Wizard tool to get a quick start. Uh, don't forget to read the documentation. Report any bugs you find. Please share your scenarios and results. We're really happy when you do so at our conference. And of course, we're always looking uh, to forward to talk to people that want to do projects with us. Thank you for your attention.